This lecture will go over normal sinus rhythm, sinus tachycardias, and sinus bradycardia. So normal sinus rhythm is the rhythm originating from the SA node, which is the pacemaker of the heart that meets the following ECG criteria. The rate, heart rate should be between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Rhythm is regular. P waves are present and consistent in configuration with one P wave before each QRS complex. The PR interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds and is constant. And the QRS duration is 0.04 to 0.12. Again, we're going to stick with 0.12 to be consistent. 0.04 to 0.12 seconds and is also consistent. Sinus arrhythmias are a variant of normal sinus rhythm. It results from changes in the intrathoracic pressure during breathing. The heart rate increases slightly during inspiration and decreases slightly during exhalation. It is an irregular rhythm that is frequently observed in healthy adults. Sinus arrhythmia has all the characteristics of normal sinus rhythm except for its irregularities. The PP and RR intervals vary with the differences between the shortest and longest interval being greater than 0.12 seconds. Sinus arrhythmias occasionally are due to non-respiratory causes such as digitalis or morphine. These drugs enhance vagal tone and cause decreased heart rate and irregularity unrelated to the respiratory cycle. Any disorder of the heartbeat is called a dysrhythmia. Although many dysrhythmias have no signs and symptoms, many others have serious consequences if not treated. Premature complexes occur when a cardiac cell or cell group other than the SA node becomes irritable and fires an impulse before the next sinus impulse is produced. The abnormal focus is called an ectopic focus and may, generate, and may be generated by arterial, junctional, or ventricular tissue. After the premature complex, there is a pause before the next normal complex, creating an irregularity in the rhythm. The patient with the premature complexes may be unaware of them or may feel palpitations or a skipping of heartbeat. So again, premature complexes, normally in a healthy heart, it's the SA node that initiates that impulse. With the premature complex, the impulse is coming somewhere else in the heart and is considered an ectopic focus. Uh, these can be classified uh, based on their repetitive nature, nature, bigeminy, trigeminy, or quadrigeminy, bi being two, tri being three, and quad being four. Bigeminy exists when normal complexes and premature complexes occur alternate, alternating in a repetitive two-beat pattern with a pause occurring after each premature complex. So complexes occur in pairs. Trigeminy is a repeated three-beat pattern usually occurring as two sequential normal complexes followed by a premature complex and a pause, repeating itself in triplets. Quadrimony, quadrigeminy is a repeated four pattern, uh, four beat pattern, usually occurring as three sequential normal complexes followed by a premature complex and a pause with the same pattern repeating itself in a four beat pattern. We know that normal sinus rhythm is 60 beats to 100 beats. So with a Brady dysrhythmia, you should recognize Brady as being slow. That would be uh, a dysrhythmia in which the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute. With Brady dysrhythmias, myocardial oxygen demand, oxygen demand is reduced because of the slow heart rate, which can be beneficial. Coronary perfusion time may be adequate because of a prolonged diastole, diastole um, which is desirable. And coronary perfusion pressure may decrease if the heart rate is too slow to provide adequate cardiac output and blood pressure. This could be a serious consequence. Therefore, if the, the, therefore the patient may tolerate the Brady dysrhythmia well if blood pressure is adequate. If it's not adequate, Brady dysrhythmias can lead to myocardial ischemia or infarction, dysrhythmias, hypotension, or heart failure. And on the other hand, so if a normal sinus rhythm is 60 to 100, a tachydysrhythmia would be a heart rate greater than 100. There are major concerns um, in the adult patient with coronary artery disease. Coronary artery blood flow occurs mostly during diastole when the aortic valve is closed and is determined by diastolic time and blood pressure in the root of the aorta. Tachydysrhythmias are serious 
because they, one, shorten the diastolic time and therefore the coronary perfusion time. Because again, if you remember back to A and P, those coronary blood vessels fill up and supply blood to the heart tissue during diastole. So if that time is shortened, there's less time for coronary perfusion. Initial increase in cardiac output and blood pressure. However, a continued rise in heart rate decreases ventricular fill filling time because of the shortened diastole leading to a decreased stroke vol volume. Consequently, the cardiac output and blood pressure will begin to decrease, reducing aortic pressure and therefore coronary, pre coronary perfusion pressure. Then finally, there's an increase in the work of the heart, increasing myocardial oxygen demand because it's pumping faster, right? It needs more oxygen to uh, fuel itself. The patient with tachydysrhythmias may have palpitations, chest discomfort, restlessness and anxiety, pale, cool skin, and syncopal episodes from hypotension. Tachydysrhythmias may also lead to heart failure. You have two charts in your textbook on page 672, chart 34-1 and 34-2 um, involving key, feature, key features of Brady and tachydysrhythmias as well as care of the patient with dysrhythmias and those I'd like you to review on your own. In terms of the etiology of dysrhythmias, what's causing these dysrhythmias? They can occur for many, for many reasons, including MI, which is myocardial infarction or heart attack, electrolytes imbalances, especially potassium and magnesium, hypoxia, drug toxicity, and hypovolemia. People who use cocaine and illicit inhalants are particularly at risk for potentially fatal dysrhythmias. Stress, fear, anxiety, and caffeine can uh, cause an increased heart rate, tachycardia or premature uh, ventricular contractions. Nicotine and alcohol excess can lead to abnormal heart rates such as AFib. Dysrhythmias may also be classified by their site of origin in the heart. These include common sinus, atrial, or ventricular dysrhythmias. Assess the patient's apical and radial pulses for a full minute for any irregularity which may occur with premature beats or AFib. If the apical pulse differs from the radial pulse rate, a pulse deficit exists and indicates that the heart is not pumping adequately to achieve optimal perfusion to the body. Now we're gonna move on and talk about sinus dysrhythmias. The SA node in the right atrium is the pacemaker in all sinus dysrhythmias. The first sinus dysrhythmia we're gonna talk about is sinus tachycardia. When the rate of the SA node discharge is more than 100 beats per minute, the rhythm is called sinus tachycardia. From the age of 10 years to adulthood, the heart rate normally does not exceed 100 beats per minute except in response to activity, and then usually does not exceed 160 beats per minute. Rarely does the heart reach 180 beats per minute. Sinus tachycardia initially increases cardiac output and blood pressure. However, continued increases in heart rate decrease coronary perfusion time, diastolic filling time, and coronary perfusion pressure while increasing myocardial oxygen demand. Increased sympathetic stimulation is a normal response to physical activity, but it may also be caused by anxiety, pain, stress, fever, anemia, hypoxemia, and hyperthyroidism. So if you think of those, you know, sort of situations that get your heart racing, anxiety, pain, stress, um, you can think of those as being um, conditions that would cause sinus tachycardia. In addition to those, fever, anemia, hypoxemia, and hyperthyroidism also can cause sinus tachycardia. Drugs can also result in sinus tachycardia, such as epinephrine, atropine, caffeine, alcohol, nicotine, cocaine, aminophilin, and thyroid medications. In some cases, sinus tachycardia is a compensatory response to decreased cardiac output or blood pressure. So if my blood pressure goes down, my heart tries to compensate by speeding up to pump faster. It can also occur in patients with dehydration, hypovolemic shock, MI, infection, and heart failure. Assess patients for signs and symptoms of hypovolemia and dehydration, including an increased pulse rate, decreased urinary output, decreased BP, and dry skin and mucous membranes. For patients with sinus tachycardia, assess for fatigue, weakness, shortness of breath, orthopnea, decreased oxygen saturation, increased pulse rate, and decreased blood pressure. 
Also assess for restlessness and anxiety from decreased cerebral perfusion and for decreased urine output from impaired renal perfusion. The patient may also have anginal pain and palpitations. The ECG pattern may show T-wave inversion or ST segment elevation or depression in response to MI. The desired outcome is to decrease the heart rate for the patient who's experiencing sinus tachycardia to a normal level by treating the underlying cause. So what's the problem causing the sinus tachycardia? Let's remove that and see if the patient uh, converts back to a normal sinus rhythm. Um, and basically a normal heart rate is what we're looking at. Because the rhythm again is uh, with sinus tachycardia is initiating in the SA node. So it's not the rhythm per se that's the problem, it's just the heart rate. So uh, remind the patient to remain on bed rest if the tachycardia causes hypotension or weakness. Teach the patient to avoid substances that increase cardiac rate, such as caffeine, alcohol, or nicotine. And help the patient develop stress management strategies or refer the patient to a mental health professional. Next, we're going to talk about sinus bradycardia. Um, again, bradycardia being a slow heart rate, so we're looking at less than 60 beats per minute, but with the impulse, yes, originating at that SA node like it should. Excessive vagal or parasympathetic stimulation to the heart causes a decreased rate of the sinus node discharge. It may result from carotid sinus massage, vomiting, suctioning, valsalva maneuver, maneuvers such as bearing down for a bowel movement or gagging, ocular pressure, or pain. Again, sinus bradycardia is a heart rate of less than 60 beats per minute. Sinus bradycardia increases coronary perfusion time, but it may decrease coronary perfusion pressure. However, myocardial oxygen demand is decreased. Well-conditioned athletes with bradycardia have a hyper-effective heart in which the strong heart muscle provides an adequate stroke volume and a low heart rate to achieve a normal cardiac output. So there, you may have patients who have a heart rate less than 60 who are not symptomatic. And what we need to address when you're taking a pulse or an apical pulse is, is the patient symptomatic if that heart rate comes back under 60. So looking at the signs and symptoms that we, we should be looking for. Again, the patient may be asymptomatic. Signs and symptoms we could look for include syncope, dizziness, weakness, confusion, hypotension, diaphoresis, shortness of breath, and chest pain. Treatment for symptomatic bradycardia includes identification and treatment of the underlying cause. If the patient has any of the symptoms that we talked about earlier and the underlying cause cannot be determined, the treatment is to administer drug therapy with atropine. If you remember with atropine, something goes up, something goes down. The thing that's going up is the heart rate. Um, IV fluids can also be used to increase intravascular volume and oxygen can be used. If it is a drug overdose that is uh, thought to be causing the bradycardia, such as with a beta blocker, then that specific cause would be treated. So if we have a beta blocker overdose, um, administration of glucagon may help by increasing heart rate and blood pressure. I've also, um, your textbook doesn't have it, but a side note, I've also heard of insulin being used to help treat a beta blocker or calcium channel blocker overdose. If the heart rate does not increase sufficiently, prepare for transcutaneous or transvenous pacing to increase the heart rate. If treatment of the underlying cause does not restore normal sinus rhythm, the patient will require uh, permanent pacemaker implantation. 